stack bus. So here we were, engineers plugging away, creating equipment for him to measure. And we reached such a point where we could actually have people walking around the room and tell them exactly where they were looking and what they were looking at, which is pretty sophisticated when you consider this was in 1970. And we had cupboard-sized computers to do this for us. Now, one day, three people from the United States Air Force who were funding my project and therefore me came down for an evaluation. And being good guests, good, I mean, you know, good hosts, we took them for a Dolphins game. Dolphins were world champions, as the Americans like to say. And then for a drinking binge after which, which is also normal practice. And somewhere along the line, I asked one of these guys who happened to be from Bell Labs, and I said, just out of curiosity, why is the United States Air Force paying us so well to study eye movements? I mean, is there a reason behind it? And he said, don't you know? I said, no, nobody told us. He said, do you watch TV? I said, yes, we watch. He said, do you watch the war taking place in Vietnam? And we said, yes. He said, have you noticed that the Huey pilots, the the search and destroy mission helicopters. Have you noticed their pilots have little bumps on their helmets? And three of us engineers said, you mean you're doing real-time tracking and using it for armaments guidance? He said, we thought you knew. That's what we are using it for. Small problem. Because we had to tell this to our supervisor. Big problem, the supervisor cancelled the project because he thought it was an insult that he, a physician, working in the Veterans Administration Hospital that was looking after people who were coming out of the Vietnam War with injuries, was doing research which was adding to killing. So what happened to us? instant death in research assistantships. And that's when my professor sat me down and said, I want you to think about this. Do you really want to quit this? Or are you doing it because I'm telling you to do it? Understand the choice you're making here. And said, and please realize it's an ethical choice. And it got us thinking. But what was interesting is that he converted that problem into an opportunity by helping us to think through what we really wanted to do into the future. And this is critical when it comes to choice making. You have to know who you are, you have to know where you want to be, roughly. Not, not in terms of detail, not in terms of the color of your toilet paper, but in roughly you ought to know what you want to be in life. And then you can talk about navigation and you can ask yourself, do I really give a damn about how my work is being used? Do I really care about what I'm doing and what it means? Or does the end justify the means and I don't care? What I'm proposing to you, not necessarily as a sign of goodwill, is that it helps in a complex situation to empathize with others in the system. If you want to look at it in a sane way, it is to better understand them and respond to them. If you are one of the diehards, I would suggest it as insurance, because if you don't understand why they are doing things and what they are doing, they can hurt you, and they will hurt you. So what I'm proposing as another skill is to empathize enough with others, both animate and inanimate, so that what you do takes them into consideration. 
normally we call this empathy. And you don't have to be spiritual, you don't need religion to worry about another person. All you need is empathy. Because empathy will lead to a certain amount of compassion. How important is this? I'll leave that to you to decide, but I suspect that without some guidance system, you will do what comes easiest, which may not be the best thing for you to do. Please ponder it. Because these are skills that you can learn, think about, practice and bring into your life that will allow you to use your natural gifts, of which you have many, for yourself and for others. You actually have a choice to do it or not to do it. If you don't do it, the nice thing about complex system is the system always responds. And all I can wish you is that the system will not respond rather unpleasantly as the way it tends to do. Not because it has any grief, but if you mistreat the system, the system tends to mistreat you. Thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Now that you force us to ask a question, so uh, so I personally disagree with like uh, you said. Uh, if you want, if you uh, you should not decide what you want to do after 25 years, but this is where that is something which will push me to in my short term goals to to realize my the realize my big big term achievement or whatever I want to do in life. So I I, I didn't get that. past which you can't change at all, <coughs> or you're worrying about the future over which you have not too much control, which would be okay if you're doing these two things. But the problem is when you do those two things in excess, you don't enjoy the present moment that you're in. All I'm trying to say is, yes, you're going somewhere. It's good to have a rough idea. Don't grab on to it with too much detail because it may not be there. But at least enjoy the journey. So in your journey, what you should worry about is direction and not necessarily destination. Because by the time you reach the destination, it may not be the same that you had wanted to reach. That's all I'm saying. But I'm, it's not a black and white thing. It's balanced. It's not black and white. Yeah, that. I mean, you can't just randomly drift around. Please think about your future, but not to the extent that it becomes fixate. Because we are all into long-term planning. Seriously speaking, when you set a goal 10 years, 15 years, 20 years into the future, it has such a low probability of occurrence. It's almost foolish trying to do it. Because it's changing too fast. I mean, look back in your own lifetime. How many of you can even remember pre-internet, pre-mobile phone days, even at your age? Can you even remember it? That's how fast change is happening. That's all I'm saying. Be cautious when you say, this is what I will do. You know, it's like people say, in the next five years, politicians say, we will eliminate poverty. Your only sane response is to laugh. Uh, good evening, sir. Sir, uh, actually you told about, about creativity and communication. Uh, how do you suggest to improve upon these two? Well, first of all, in both these things require practice. Yeah? It's not things that you can learn from the book and instantly apply. In communication, worrying about who you're communicating to, forcing yourself to be brief. And 
thinking about what you are going to say before saying. See, in our biology it is rather strange because if I wanted to touch my nose, I do not have to follow my hand and make corrections as I go because my brain knows it has a feedback mechanism, it is constantly, it is called proprioception. Unfortunately, in our thinking and many of our actions, we do not have the same mechanism because think of the number of times you were saying something to someone and you said something really stupid and you said, ah, should not have said it. It is because you do not think about thinking while you are thinking. Sounds odd, but that is what it is because here you are thinking about moving while you are moving. But if you slow down a little bit, literally slow down in your mind, you can actually watch yourself thinking as you are thinking. It is not magic, you do not have to be a sannyasi to do it, you do not have to go into grade A meditation, you can learn this. But thinking about thinking, having a meta approach to what you produce, learning to communicate well, using visuals, please think about it. If you want to you know, go into the net, just Google for sketch noting. There are thousands of pages on how to sketch and note. It will help you in the note taking in your classes, it will help you in your real life, and it is a hell of a way to communicate because you can reduce entire ideas to simple diagram. Not necessarily, you know, it has a little written stuff, but it shows connection. Otherwise, we go into serial narrative, that is what bullet points are, one follows the other. In real life, there is very little of serial work. This touches upon that, that encourages this, that is how complexity is. So, if you look at the notes that I use, for example, you know, to, to talk to you guys, it comes in diagrams like that. It is something, you do not have to be an artist you can learn how to visually think, you know. There are websites that offer courses, there are books, but most important is forget about books, forget about start practicing it once you have learnt the simple basics and you learn and improve as you go. Same thing with creativity. There are creative problem solving courses available. In fact, I remember we ran one, I think it was for C5 or C6. <laughs> creativity training. These things can be arranged, but you will have to do it on your own because for some reason institutions do not believe this is important, although they like the outcomes when you do it. So, you can learn and it is not rocket science. Trust me, it is not. If I could be creative, you can be creative. And I would not say this just between you and me, I have taught large numbers of fishermen, farmers, and you know tribals living in forestry to sit down and do problem analysis and creative problem solve. They have no problem. In fact, the more educated you are, the tougher you find it. The others seem to have no problem doing these things. I found you know like if you are dealing with experts, my god they are difficult to deal with because they have to unlearn a lot of things before they can learn new things. Yes, and then we will come. You will have to shout, yeah. yeah. If you are working with your truthful efforts and instead of appreciation, you got domination from someone and by that you must be fired and when you are working in a firm and, uh, and that time after that you are fired from the job and how will you take that thing, I mean, it is up to you, I mean, your thoughts, in your thoughts, how well, will you take it? Yeah, just off the top, there is no simple solutions to this. First of all, I would hesitate about truthful thought, it is truthful to you, right? Yeah, that is nice. Uh, try and understand what truthful means to the other, not necessarily to agree. See, I am talking about respecting people listening to them and trying to understand what they are saying and why they are saying it, it does not mean you have to agree with them. But if you understand why you are saying, why they are saying it, it might 
show you opportunities on how to deal with. These are not cut and dry things. You might find people who are, shall we say, inherently evil, who are out to get you. Yeah, sometimes you do get into that situation and I suspect you'll suffer the consequences. But I would not recommend that you say, since this is the situation, I'm going to cow down and humor this guy for the rest of my life and take out my anger, which I can't show to him, on somebody else, like your wife or your children or your friends. That's the difference. Because it will affect you whether you like it or not. You don't have control of the outside world. You don't have too much control on your subconscious either. So when you bravely say, oh, that doesn't affect me, and your subconscious is burning up, problem. So think about it. I'm not saying these, these are not simple algorithms where you fit in the stuff and out pops the answer. I'm saying put yourself in somebody else's position and say, why are they doing this? Can I try and understand them better? When you understand them better, your reaction to what they are doing will change a little bit because of your understanding. That's the beginning. That's all. That's the beginning that you're looking for. What happens eventually, some of it is in your control, some of it is not. But you do know, in a complex system, when you give an input, the system is disturbed, it will come to a new equilibrium, which means you will face the consequences. Different, different cultures explain this differently. In our culture, we have a nice terminology for it. We call it karma. It's system response. No, don't convince yourself. Just listen to yourself. Really listen to yourself and not your ego. I, I'm not talking spiritual stuff. Because all of us, you know, when somebody comes, you know, it's like, Different people say the same thing, we look at it differently, because it affects us differently. Our relationships are different. If you are walking down the road and someone comes to you and says, look, I am a beautician and I am a bit of an expert in this kind of a thing, I have been watching you walk past me every day, I seriously think if you shave off your beard and do your hair differently, you will look better. The chances are you will hit him. If your girlfriend says that, you say, damn, I, I never thought of that. Maybe, maybe I should do something about it. Dude, that's the difference. It's where is it coming from? Why is it coming? How do I react? So who is reacting to this? Your intelligence? Uh-uh. That's your ego reacting to it. Wow. You mean if I take my beard off, I'm better for you? Take it off. How fast can I go to the salon? That's all I'm saying. Think. See. We are what we are, but you can't wander around not knowing that, that you don't have control over everything and pretend you have. If you appreciate that, take it into consideration, you have a better than even chance. No guaranteed success, better than even chance, that's all. I'm not an expert in that man. I have felt it. You know, it's like what they say. They say, how do you define madness? Is I have no idea, but I, when I see it, I know it. I'm not an expert in that area. But I do know that there is a part of me that is so full of itself that it distracts me from being sensible about many things. And for the lack of a better word, I conveniently call it an ego. Because you go into deep analysis, sometimes you miss it. But it works. I think it will work for you too. There were some questions here. Yeah, so go I ahead. Uh, you are running out of time. So let's, uh, let's, let's so we have a small memento. Thank you.